in 2017 during the Easter time the most popular channel CNN came out with a interesting documentary on Jesus faith fact forgery you can name it CNN cross-examined Christianity from different angles. They have taken views from different walks of life, different scholars, different uh, ethnic background. You name it, CNN tried its level best to dissect Christianity. Interestingly, I came across one episode that is about St. Thomas. An ancient tradition claims Jesus sends him on a terrifying journey. He is martyred, his relics scattered. That was a fascinating uh, documentary because it was one of its kind about an ethnic community in India, the southern tip of India, and an international media is talking about it. It's a little bit of a mystery. It may be there as early as the second century, and maybe it's plausible that it even arrived in the first century. The disciple famous in the Bible for doubt founded one of the earliest Christian churches in India. So curiosity developed into more details, and I found out that the only man who represented the Syrian Catholic Church, uh, for that matter, the Aramaic tradition, was Father Joseph J. Palakin. And I have the pleasure of meeting him today here in Houston uh, against the backdrop of uh, the beautiful uh, Houston downtown. And um, Father Joseph, it's a pleasure uh, to meet you and uh, have a few words with you. It's an honor to be with you. Thank, Thank you. you. It's going to be a straight talk. It's not a scripted talk. But <clears throat> CNN. As we all know, it's, it's a secular channel, uh, they have their own views on various issues. But the documentary they came out was a very fascinating one on many respects. It's a story of the importance of faith, reason and doubt. What is the motive behind CNN's uh, uh, documentary on that subject? Okay, CNN was trying to tell the story of Jesus. Uh, through the people who were closely associated with him, mm -hmm. starting from Mary Magdalene, uh, St. Peter, and then they also chose St. Thomas. So when they decided to create a segment on St. Thomas, they saw my Aramaic project website, because it deals with Aramaic language, and they saw my writings, and finally they decided to use me as a resource person. So they emailed me, just like that. A company in England was producing it for, on behalf of CNN, Newtopia. So they emailed me and I replied. Unfortunately, I was going to London for a program at Central London at the Ukrainian Catholic Cathedral. My English Mass, the Ramadan Mass, followed by a documentary that I created on Christianity in Kerala. So I invited the key people from the team to come and attend the session and I give a lecture. So they asked me, where should we go? Uh, their team was getting ready to go to India, but they didn't have a proper idea who to meet, where to go. So I directed the traffic to the East Syriac sector, which is the Syria Malabar sector. So the first name that I came to my mind was Dr. Thomas Kunamagal. So they went to Kerala and they charted their program accordingly. So the focus was on St. Thomas Christians in Kerala. So it was by chance, as you mentioned in your introductory dialogue, I was really, really surprised a secular channel like that mm -hmm. would spend so much time and resources into research mm -hmm. and go deep into the issue. Mm -hmm. And they used me to get ideas about Margangali, how the theme of St. Thomas is being reenacted mm -hmm. through the dance. So they wanted the contents of the 14 cantos of uh, Margangali. So, and then finally they decided to interview me too as a source person. I was lucky, there was a great honor, as you mentioned. I was the only one from Kerala, from that community. They knew that there is a community mm -hmm. that holds the faith in St. Thomas as the father of faith. Mm -hmm. And it was not just an ideational thing, it was intensely mm -hmm. personal. Mm -hmm. Because we, St. Thomas Christians, believe that St. Thomas came to Kerala 
you don't have to go for in search of proofs. Mm -hmm. There are many people who are still going in search of proofs. Mm -hmm. But he is in us. He is within us. He is the he carries the DNA mm -hmm. of our faith. Mm -hmm. So the CNN, the production team understood the seriousness of our faith mm -hmm. and especially how we were still using Syriac Aramaic language. Mm -hmm. So that was a link between me mm -hmm. and the team that we are still holding the Syriac language, the language of their, their mother tongue. Mm -hmm. We still keep on. Mm -hmm. So that's how they came to Kerala and mm -hmm. I came into the picture mm -hmm. and the final result is I'm not sure if they, if that program was broadcast in India. No, I, I don't think it is. Uh, uh, it, it has gained uh, as much attention it deserves. That's the reason why I am doing this uh, follow-through interview. Great. Uh, there are some specifics into the St. Thomas ancestry. Christianity became an official religion from the third century. Until then, it was uh, persecutions and a lot of struggles, and people were underground or uh, in uh, catacombs uh, doing the, you know their own community work but when it comes to the eastern christianity people want very specific proof very scientific proof very archeo archaeological proof why those same standard is not applicable when it comes to other parts of the christianity like in europe as we go through the cnn the commentary we can see that they have approached the subject in three forms. One is the scientific approach, and the second one is the uh, archaeological evidences, and the third one was the the oral traditions. Mm -hmm. People from Harvard, Duke, Brown, or, uh, or Oxford, even Oxford and uh, Notre Dame, uh, name it. You know, many eminent professors from the Ivy League participated in it and they contributed it, and they all are of the same view that although there is no material evidence to prove the existence of St. Thomas in the Kerala shores back then, but, but still the nature and the culture and the heritage of that community is more than uh, enough to you know, believe or uh, to substantiate that uh, it is indeed an authentic activity of a person. But that is the, that is the way they uh, you know, come to a conclusion. But that's not enough for a skeptic and we have more skeptics back in India than uh, the western world. St. Thomas is not here, he is not here, he is not here, he is not here, he is not here. So, like you know, many historians even uh, ridicule the fact that you know, St. Thomas is uh, uh, coming to you, Kerala is uh, impossible because back then Kerala was just a, uh, you know, uh, a forest uh, land and there was no civilization back uh, then over there. So, how do you look at those kind of uh, uh, sarcasm or, uh, you know, or, uh, or, uh, or approach by eminent historians uh, uh, that India or Kerala uh, represent or uh, respect? We can respect their view and the fact that we too don't have material evidence. We were not very good at keeping material evidences too. Uh, CNN's conclusion was it is possible mm -hmm. that St. Thomas must have gone to India. No, they, they use two words. One is possible or plausible. Plausible. The way they, re, they framed uh, their program, that conclusion is quite valid. Mm -hmm. um, we can also say it is possible and plausible. One idea, uh, when you mentioned that St. Thomas was daring to go all the way to India, mm -hmm. uh, Kerala. Kerala was not unknown. Yes. Kerala was known to the Middle East through the spice trade. Mm -hmm. Spices and aromatics however, were being brought to the Roman world as a result of the Indian Ocean trade, as, as a result of connections to places. Like Second, there's a p hypothesis that Jewish traders who settled in Kerala. A first point of contact for Thomas might have been Jewish traders who spoke his language and shared his faith. Because this was the center of spice trade, the Jewish uh, community settled there and there's a Jewish town in Kochi even today. There were Jewish colonies in Kerala. Mm -hmm. So the seven and a half churches that we are talking about, mm -hmm. probably they were Jewish colonies. Mm -hmm. And before this, mm -hmm. during our conversation, you mentioned uh, Acts of Thomas. Mm -hmm. In the Acts of Thomas, uh, it, it says that Saint, when St. Thomas came, he met a Jewish flute playing girl mm -hmm. and they talked 
in their language, they understood, which means there were Jewish people here. Mm -hmm. So probably that prompted him. There was already ships coming to the shores, mm -hmm. so he joined one of the ships mm -hmm. and he came. So that's the plausible uh, reason. Uh, you know, again back to the CNN uh, interview or uh, the documentary, they have. Um, on the on the archaeological front, they have come across some evidences uh, on the ports of uh, Musaris. Yeah, Patanam. Uh, yeah, Patanam. Hmm. Pottery fragments have been found, thousands of which are clearly from the Mediterranean world, particularly wine amphora, that's wine containers, on a scale that eclipses most other sites in India. Lewis is at the British Museum in London to see a 2,000-year-old coin that could connect Thomas to India. Coins of King Gondophares in the 19th century added a completely different element into the mix. This proves that there are some historical elements in the Acts of Thomas. Another point of contention is some in the Syrian uh, church believe that their ancestors were Brahmins. Do you think is there any connection or does Christianity need any kind of uh, race or casteist uh, support in order to uh, make it more um, superior or... Uh, <laughs> yeah. What is your take on that? No, I don't think. We don't need to bring this Brahmin business to establish that the St. Thomas Christians are of a superior race. That probably was a later reading to show that we are somebody. Mm -hmm. But at that time there was no Brahmin influx from the north to the south. That probably happened around 7th century. Mm -hmm. That's almost um, established now, mm -hmm. that the Brahmin presence did not happen before, mm -hmm. before 7th century. Mm -hmm. So we don't need that. Mm -hmm. This was a proto-Tamil speaking Dravidian race. Mm -hmm. But there was also, as you mentioned about the Patanam project, there were so many communications. Mm -hmm. Ships came here, people came here, they brought their things here, they took things from here. Mm -hmm. So pr maybe some people uh, settled down mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Even now, we use for the curtain in the stage that Yavaniga. Mm -hmm. Yavaniga. Mm -hmm. Because that is, Yavanan is Greek. Mm -hmm. And so we have borrowed so many things. So mm -hmm. people must have settled there. So there was a racial mixture mm -hmm. in Kerala. Mm -hmm in the first century. Mm -hmm. But does it mean that the Brahmins were here? Mm -hmm. That is a re restructuring of the narrative. Mm -hmm. and we don't need to hold to that mm -hmm. hypothesis. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. So according to Jesus' teachings, the life and the path and the way is a new direction given to the disciples. Yes. And many times they had struggled to comprehend what he means. Yes. And St. Thomas was the only person among the twelve to question or ask questions to Jesus whenever he had trouble. And we have seen that his questions in fact answered many questions the whole world even have now. Everybody loves Jesus as a man, as a leader, as a guru. His life, his teachings is uh, remarkable. But when it comes to Jesus' divinity, people always have a question. Yes. Whether he is a messenger or a guru or a mystic, but only St. Thomas' question have brought out some answers. Yes. Or the divinity of Jesus was established by St. Thomas' uh, question. Yes. And uh, Jesus himself witnessed to him and uh, he said, My Lord. My God. That very statement is the only statement in the Bible, in the whole canonical Bible, where we can see Jesus being declared as a God. Would you think St. Thomas is getting his due weightage in the Christian world? A tricky question. Uh, the answer is I don't. Because St. Peter uh, was associated with Rome, and Rome was associated with political power. The narrative of early Christianity was kept on focusing on the West. Mm -hmm. They completely forgot. They forgot about what was happening here. Mm -hmm. As you clearly mentioned, St. Thomas was the first one to apply the word Allah mm -hmm. 
to Jesus. Ma walah. Those mm -hmm. are the words that Saint Thomas spoke. Mm -hmm. My Lord mm -hmm. and my God. Mm -hmm. uh, compared with Saint Peter, Peter made a profession of faith. Jesus asked, uh, "Who do you say that I am?" Mm -hmm. And initially they said, "Oh, you are a prophet. You are a Saint John the Baptist reborn, or this or that." But then Jesus pointed to them, "Who do you say that I am?" Mm -hmm. And it was saying, Peter, who said, you are the Messiah, mm -hmm. Mishiha, mm -hmm. that is the word Mishiha, mm -hmm. meaning you are the Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, Christ, Mishiha, is a politically loaded term. Mm -hmm. it, it could be a superhuman being. Mm -hmm. It is not Allah, mm -hmm. but Jesus acknowledged it, mm -hmm. um, appreciated him mm -hmm. for saying that because Jewish people have been waiting for the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, see Peter acknowledged that this one is the Messiah that we have been waiting for. Mm -hmm. Jesus was happy with the answer mm -hmm. and he acknowledged and appreciated it and he said, I will give you power. Mm -hmm. But St. Thomas was the first one to use the word Allah. Mm -hmm. And when you think mm -hmm. that their God was Yahweh, mm -hmm. for every Jewish person the God is Yahweh, mm -hmm. and they have been, they grew up in that strong monotheistic understanding of God. Mm -hmm. But St. Thomas is looking at Jesus and say, uses the word Allah. Mm -hmm. To him means you are, you are totaling the existing concept of God. Mm -hmm. So Yahweh and then this also is God. Mm -hmm. Now Trinity, the concept of Trinity had not evolved yet. Mm -hmm. That took some time mm -hmm. and later the revelation of the Holy Spirit and mm -hmm. the Pentecost and all that. Mm -hmm. So it was a gradual revelation. Mm -hmm. St. Thomas jumped the gun mm -hmm. and told in front of his friends, that mm -hmm. this is God, mm -hmm. Allah, mm -hmm. which is a very, very important statement. Mm -hmm. But to answer your question, mm -hmm. he did not get credit. Mm -hmm. Jesus appreciated him. Mm -hmm. Jesus, said, oh, Jesus appreciated him saying for saying that, mm -hmm. oh, now you believe because mm -hmm. you saw me. Mm -hmm. But those who believe without seeing me are also blessed, he said, mm -hmm. so he was referring to you and me. Mm -hmm. But nobody else made that statement. Mm -hmm. St. Thomas through that Marwala created a revolution mm -hmm. in the history and not only of uh, Christianity, mm -hmm. but in the, in the understanding of God. Mm -hmm. And this understanding will evolve into Trinity. The Pentecost had not happened yet. Mm -hmm. So this eventually will evolve into Yahweh the Father, mm -hmm. Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three persons, yet one God. Mm -hmm. So he, he initiated that, that conversation mm -hmm. of breaking the strictly monotheistic idea of God as Yahweh mm -hmm. into three persons, yet mm -hmm. one God. Mm -hmm. Did he get credit for that? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Kerala. Southwest India. Every year, members of an ancient Christian sect gather at the Mar Thoma Shrine. They celebrate the most significant event in the history of their church. There are two different sets of songs that we continue to sing. One is called the Ramban part, Song of the Ramban which narrates the activities of St. Thomas, his missionary activities in Kerala. And the other is Margam Kali, Dance of the Way, which is still being danced in Kerala. The songs tell us that the apostle was well received wherever he went. People welcomed him and received his message and accepted the baptism from the apostle and Christian communities grew. We, we are sitting in America and I have seen that although you are talking something against the popular beliefs and popular idea, your idea is being recognized by the people in the West. You are talking about the language, the original language Jesus has spoken and the world is watching that. Oxford University has no problem acknowledging you. The US Library of Congress have no problem in taking your presentation and Harvard University. Notre Dame University. So why the Indian church still not getting back to its own roots? So what do you think the next level in order to carry forward the mission of St. Thomas or establishing his place in history in wow. a rightful manner? Interesting analysis. Um, you are right. I did my doctoral dissertation on Syriac chants. My approach to Syriac was through music. And I realized this music is so unique 
And in India, we don't talk about, we talk only about Carnatic music and Hindustani music, period. Whatever, whatever other styles is just folk music. Mm -hmm. But Syriac chants is a system, mm -hmm. like the Raga. Mm -hmm. It is a system. There is an intellect, intellection behind that system. Mm -hmm. It is not just a cluster of melodies. Mm -hmm. And through the doctor dissertation, I realized that this is unique. Mm -hmm. So I thought I should tell the whole world, mm -hmm. hey, beside Hindustani and Carnatic, there is something else among the so-called Syrian Christians, Syria Christians, mm -hmm. St. Thomas Christians. Mm -hmm. So we need to talk to the world about this tradition. Mm -hmm. And then you will be amazed. Some of my friends and my superiors even said, you are wasting time. Mm -hmm. We left Syria. Mm -hmm. It is obsolete. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants mm -hmm. it. Because it's not practical. It is not practical. <laughs> yeah. People don't understand. Mm -hmm. So why do you waste your time and resources for this? Mm -hmm. I laughed within myself, mm -hmm. but I continued, finished my doctorate studies, took my doctorate. And fortunately, mm -hmm. my guide, Professor Stephen Blum, mm -hmm. is someone who understood the value, just as you mentioned about Library of Congress in Oxford. Mm -hmm. He understood the value mm -hmm. of this musical tradition. Mm -hmm. So he supported me, helped me write the dissertation. And then I thought I should create a CD. I created a CD, Kambil Mar and Sri Chants from South India. Mm -hmm. I called older priests who handled this music mm -hmm. and they did a recording and a company in the Netherlands published it. And that was the opening, my opening to the international world. Mm -hmm. The CD got wonderful reviews from academic journals. Mm -hmm. So that set the tone for my... Uh, that created a passion in me. Mm -hmm. So after that, I thought, I have. Nobody else is doing it. Mm -hmm. My people are ridiculing me, not mm -hmm. only saying, mm -hmm. hey, take some money mm -hmm. and do something about it. Mm -hmm. No, don't waste your money mm -hmm. on these things mm -hmm. and send that money here. Mm -hmm. And so I said, but I persisted. It is like uh, the man uh, in, the, in the parable that Jesus said, I found a field with a treasure. Mm -hmm. So I sold everything that I have mm -hmm. and I bought the treasure. Mm -hmm. So this Aramaic language, mm -hmm. this music tradition, the language, the, the sound, the way of thinking. A language mm -hmm. also involves a way of thinking mm -hmm. and that, that evolved all over centuries. Mm -hmm. And we cannot just let it die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why I kept on. I still don't know why our people don't take it seriously. Mm -hmm. Yet, yeah, although there's mm -hmm. another correction. Mm -hmm. We are sitting here mm -hmm. because the organizers of this Sri Convention in North America mm -hmm. finally took note of my contributions, mm -hmm. took note of my website, mm -hmm. the Aramaic Project website, mm -hmm. and the youngsters here mm -hmm. wanted to incorporate Syriac chants into the Kurban. Mm -hmm. So they thought they invited me for two reasons. One, to teach them the English, the Kurban that I co-composed. Mm -hmm. So yesterday morning and this morning we celebrated the Kurbana that I co-composed with George Thaila. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they also wanted me to incorporate uh, Syriac chants. Mm -hmm. And two very important uh, chants we sang today. Mm -hmm. uh, four chants, but mm -hmm. two very important one is Sagadin and Mar, La La Husar, Walna Chusar, Dilapu Laga. <clears throat> so can you sing one of those chants? Yes. That, uh, you know, it, it, it has a certain intonation and yes. variation, sir. Yes. So, sure. Sagadin and Marla la husag, Walna shusag, Dula pulaga. This is from a poem written in the 7th century by mm -hmm. a great saint, mm -hmm. and the meaning is very interesting. Sagadin and Mar, we praise you, Lord. La la husa la ha, mm -hmm. which we mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. La la husag, your divinity, while mm -hmm. husag, and your humanity, the mm -hmm. la pulaga, mm -hmm. without doubt. Mm -hmm. We praise you, mm -hmm. your divinity and humanity, without doubt. Mm -hmm. Now there's a trick here. The pulaga means doubt or division. Mm -hmm. So la pulaga means can be also without division. Mm -hmm. Now when you apply that meaning, mm -hmm. it becomes serious. Mm -hmm. We praise you, Lord, in your indivisible humanity and divinity. Mm -hmm. Indivisible humanity and divinity. Mm -hmm. 
in the history of Catholic Christian religion, mm -hmm. we shed so much blood mm -hmm. for this concept. Mm -hmm. How did humanity and divinity co-mingled in mm -hmm. Jesus? Mm -hmm. And we had so many discussions, so many ecumenical councils, Council of Ephesus, Council of Chalcedon, all these discussions were nullified mm -hmm. by us singing Sagadinamar Lala Husa Walna Susa Dilapu Laga. We in your indivisible humanity and divinity. Mm -hmm. We believe it without doubt. Mm -hmm. While the Portuguese missionaries were accusing us of heresy, mm -hmm. we were singing mm -hmm. in our liturgy mm -hmm. the correct doctrine, the correct theology. Mm -hmm. That's why I thought we should bring those treasures mm -hmm. back into the experience of the present generation, mm -hmm. the next generation. Mm -hmm. So coming back, the organizers mm -hmm. finally acknowledged Mm -hmm. my contribution mm -hmm. and they wanted that's why they brought me here mm -hmm. uh, used as a resource person mm -hmm. so I'm happy oh, your observation is completely correct but there are positive trends that are happening in uh, America mainly this is specially prepared for our diocese and we took initiative to prepare these uh, songs and he is the man who worked behind it so on behalf of the diocese We appreciate his dedication and his work to complete this work of composing English Mass uh, songs for our liturgy. Thank you, Father Parike. Millennials are the new generation, of, for that matter, even Christianity in Europe is seeking more and more evidences. And St. Thomas is one of the disciples who questioned Jesus at various stage with love, with conviction, with eagerness to learn more deeper into it. And the Guru, Jesus, took it in a positive spirit and addressed all his concerns in an amicable manner. But those traditions are not incorporated well enough in the, in the Christianity which we come across in the universal church. For example, I was uh, looking at the, the St. Thomas University in uh, Houston. I thought it is uh, named after uh, the Dr. Thomas, Thomas. Oh. But, but every institution uh, under St. Thomas is named out after St. Thomas Aquinas. Aquinas. So there is not much representation of St. Thomas in the, uh, in, you know, in, the, in, the, in the Western world. So isn't it time the Siro Malabar Church you know, work more towards it and um, uh, establish their uh, value uh, among other churches, uh, just like the Coptic Church of Egypt. If you look at the, the Coptic Church, they, uh, they are recognized uh, everywhere in Canada, US and Mexico, Russia, name it, because they still uh, inherit their heritage without any kind of uh, submissiveness. Isn't the time we value our our existence the, the, the way it should be? Absolutely. The way you arrived at that point is fascinating. We definitely need to be more proud of our St. Thomas heritage. We don't need to go for material evidences. Who has material evidences from the first century? Do we have ancient sources that attest to their antiquity all the way to the first century? No, but we don't have that kind of evidence for Christian presence anywhere. So we should really be proud. There is, since you brought back CNN again, there's one area that CNN researchers did not look into. Mm -hmm. That is liturgy, mm -hmm. our kurban. To this day, St. Thomas Christians perform parts of the liturgy in Syriac, the language of early Christianity, close to that spoken by Jesus. Because liturgy is sacred text. Mm -hmm. You don't mess with it. Mm -hmm. You have it, and then you hand it over for mm -hmm. generation after generation without manipulating anything. Mm -hmm. And our Kurbana mm -hmm. mentions St. Thomas mm -hmm. within the Mass, in the commemoration hymn, we refer to him as the father of our faith, mm -hmm. which is a serious matter. So you mean to say the oral tradition 
that is um, corroborated by different groups of the same community um, validate the fact that uh, there is a main figure yes. in, the, in, the, in the overall process. Yes, yes. we commemorate Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Joseph and Saint Thomas mm -hmm. and the Apostles and, and the Apostles especially mm -hmm. we say by name Saint Thomas. Mm -hmm. So this has been going on. Mm -hmm. That is our evidence that that faith, that St. Thomas is the father of our faith, that our DNA, we mm -hmm. share the mm -hmm. same DNA, mm -hmm. is, is to be taken very serious, seriously. Mm -hmm. So, but yet, we don't tell the world. Mm -hmm. And look at our younger people. Mm -hmm. They are ready to learn Surik chants. Mm -hmm. They say, we want to tell our friends that we know mm -hmm. language that Jesus spoke. Mm -hmm. We want to sing in that language. They want to find their roots. Mm -hmm. And they want to be proud of it. Mm -hmm. Shalaha Kandisha Haisana Kandisha Lamayosa Asraham Male. Asraham Male, have mercy on us. So that's beautiful. So when I go to teach younger children Sri Chan's Kandisha Laha, I tell them, you can tell your friends, hey guys. I know a chant in the very same language that Jesus spoke. Mm -hmm. And then you can sing this to them. Kandesha Alaha, this is the Sagyo. Kandesha Hail Sana, Kandesha Lama Yosa Esaham Mala. In the same Alaha, mm -hmm. but St. Thomas used Marwala. Mm -hmm. He is in the Sagyo and Kandesha mm -hmm. Alaha, Holy God, mm -hmm. Holy Mighty One, Holy mm -hmm. Immortal One. Mm -hmm. So that movement is coming from here, mm -hmm. from North America, mm -hmm. we, they live among uh, all these kinds of people and they, they when they question, well, was your father a Christian? Mm -hmm. uh, how did you get a name like Matthew? Mm -hmm. They are now proud to say, hey mm -hmm. guys, we got faith long time ago. <laughs> We have our own history, heritage and uh, uh, advancements and uh, a share in the history. Yes. Isn't it time the Siro Malabar Church, uh, you know, focus on those ideals and uh, evolve into a new genre of uh, uh, proud believers. It's so weird the the presentation that you made. That mindset was there in the early Christianity in India. Mm -hmm. You know what was the name given to Christianity? Mm -hmm. The word Christianos happened in Antioch. Mm -hmm. So they didn't know how to call followers of Jesus. Was it that Jewish is an offshoot like a Hasidic uh, offshoot of Judaism mm -hmm. or is it something else? They didn't know what to do with this mm -hmm. because initially they were still going to the temple and uh, worshipping, continuing the Jewish practices. Eventually they called the followers of Jesus Christianos, meaning followers of Jesus. Mm -hmm. But in India we have another term mm -hmm. for this new movement mm -hmm. that was called Margam. Mm -hmm. Margam. The, the way. The way. Yeah. The, the origin of that word is from the Buddhist. Mm -hmm. Buddha, uh, Margam. Buddha yes. proposed the new movement as Margam. Mm -hmm. uh, way. Mm -hmm. Ashtanga Margam. Mm -hmm. So we had no problem. There were mm -hmm. so many religions. So we adopted the idea of a new path mm -hmm. to reach God. Mm -hmm. So St. Thomas' message was fully accepted and they indigenized it. Mm -hmm. They didn't call Christianos mm -hmm. because they didn't speak Greek. Mm -hmm. They didn't call by another, any other name. Mm -hmm. They adopted an existing Pali or Sanskrit word mm -hmm. which is used in the Protestant Buddhism and called this movement Margam. That's why we have Margam Kali. Mm -hmm. This Margam Kali, in fact, is not about Kali about uh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. The story is about St. Thomas. Mm -hmm. So we. Mm -hmm. So there was a time mm -hmm. when we were fully indigenized. Mm -hmm. Then slowly, slowly we lost the identity, mm -hmm. as you mentioned. 
when the Portuguese came. Initially, mm -hmm. we might have had, not we might have had, we mm -hmm. had, mm -hmm. we were assisted them, mm -hmm. their imposition of Latin mm -hmm. and other culture. But slowly, slowly, mm -hmm. we adopted. Mm -hmm. And then we began to keep pictures of Jesus, blue-eyed, blonde-haired <laughs> Jesus. This is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Blessed Virgin Mary, beautiful Italian e e Even the Saint Alphonse, uh, uh, people say that uh, it's not the original picture. Soon Saint Alphonse says will have blue eyes. Mm -hmm. Because we have, we are so servile in us. That servitude, mm -hmm. intellectual slavery mm -hmm. is so prominent. Mm -hmm. When you go to Kerala and look mm -hmm. at the modern mega crawl churches, churches yes. they spend crores and crores of rupees to create churches. Mm -hmm. But the architecture mm -hmm. is the same that the Portuguese made. The mm -hmm. paintings, mm -hmm. the interior decorations mm -hmm. are all, we have nothing to contribute. Mm -hmm. And Kerala is a culturally rich mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. But no church authority, no bishop, no vicar said, hey, we need to create a different form of architecture mm -hmm. that is that grows from this soil. Mm -hmm. No, when you enter the church, it is like the colors, mm -hmm. the way interior decorations are all similar to what we see in Europe. Mm -hmm. So we have not been able to wean ourselves, liberate ourselves mm -hmm. from that intellectual servitude. Mm -hmm. Maybe the next generation will do that. Mm -hmm. Maybe conversations like this because you are challenging mm -hmm. the status quo. I think I'm just uh, uh, conducting this uh, interview on the lines of CNN's findings. If a international secular channel is uh, coming out with a documentary on a ethnic community in the in the in the, in the in the end of the world, there is some substance to it, and that created curiosity in me. And I I find that uh, the world is uh, looking at you, and the world is recognizing <laughs> you, and the intellectual circle is uh, uh, is uh, ready to accept the fact that this is uh, one of the uh, miracles uh, happened in the Christian world, and um, uh, that's what the whole purpose of this conversation. And um, I'm so glad that I could meet you here in uh, Houston, Sierra uh, Malabar International Convention. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for, so much. Uh, so thank you so much for your time. Yeah, I'm so happy. This was an intellectually stimulating conversation, and I hope uh, the viewers will have a chance to redirect their thoughts and explore more. From where we stopped, they can go further. Okay. And you never know what the outcomes will be. Okay. God bless. God bless you. Thank you for the work that you do. Okay. Thank you so much. And he is the man who worked behind him. So on behalf of the dynasty, we appreciate his dedication.